As we know, several Republicans are calling for a pathological liar, George Santos, to step down. They had press conferences, everything, talked trash about him, laughed about his volleyball background where he won district championships or something like that. Um, but you know what? Newly now elected Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy, he's decided to go ahead and talk about this a little bit more. In fact, he might even put Santos on some committees because that's what he's all about. This idea didn't really bode well for a former now representative, Adam Kinzinger. And he went on uh, the Bulwark podcast and he had some choice words for uh, Kevin McCarthy. Let's watch that. Speaker McCarthy says, well, a lot of folks here in Congress have fabricated part of their resume and Santos will have to build the trust of voters. And he says that Santos will get some committee assignments, not the top ones. Oh, God. But Kevin's a piece of <laughs> And let's just be honest about this because he will say whatever he needs to say to stay in power. I'm not even saying that gratuitously to be mean to him. It's just a fact. Kinzinger says it's just a fact. Okay, Adam, sure. Well, give me some of these facts. Let's watch this next piece. Look at him taking Swalwell and Schiff off of committees, okay, and Ilan Omar. He's saying, well, that's because you guys took Marjorie Taylor Greene and Gosar. And keep in mind, both of those were bipartisan votes, okay? We did it because Marjorie Taylor Greene, Jewish space lasers, you know, school shootings never happened, among other things. Paul Gosar, because he attended a white supremacy conference. It's a little different. And that was, you know, a couple years after Kevin McCarthy threw Steve King off of committees for doing even less than what Paul Gosar did. So, no, on the Santos things, it's different. Yeah, tons of people can exaggerate, you know, parts of their resume. It's different than making up a whole new life. But Kevin needs his vote. If this was a 20 vote majority, he'd throw Santos under the bus, but it's a five vote. So he needs him. So, Waz, did he break this down right? I mean, those facts that he threw around. I mean, come on, you can't have watched the public flogging, the public cucking of Kevin McCarthy <laughs> last week with these House votes and not come to this very same conclusion. This guy has absolutely no shame. He has no spine. He has no backbone. He has no principle. He let those people literally just embarrass him, shame him publicly because he's just been dying to be the Speaker of the House. So. Right on the head with that very, very weak majority with some, you know, basically politically terroristic types um, in the Freedom Caucus. Like he understands where his bread is buttered and he can't afford to insult any Republican, even a lowly dissent. <laughs> New representative who's literally just lied at every single turn. Like the standard of just being who you say you are doesn't even count for Kevin McCarthy. Not at all. What do you think, Yes. Yeah, I, I, I just don't know about you guys, but I was never expecting any kind of George Santos justice to come from Kevin McCarthy. And a big part of it is for reasons I was, was just talking about. But even if it wasn't a matter of like five votes or 20 votes or whatever it is, he wouldn't do anything because that would mean acknowledging that one of your members of Congress was only elected because he intentionally deceived an entire voting district. And they don't want to set any precedents. How many other members of Congress would McCarthy have to mm. boot on the grounds of dishonesty if he booted this one? And how many of them would come from the Republican side? Mm, well, that's a point I hadn't thought of because then uh, I think it was Matt Gates said it too. He goes, how many people embellish on their resumes? I guess a lot of y'all do. <laughs> this seems like a normal seat <laughs> Not here. me, I'm, I'm very honest <laughs> on my resume. <laughs> we'll, have to, oh, we'll have to review yeah. in a second. I haven't had a chance to check that out before you appeared on the show. But you know, one more piece about Kevin McCarthy here because Adam Kinzinger had those points, those facts that he said about how Kevin McCarthy would do anything to retain and gain power. How about with the former, I guess still the lead of the Republican Party, Donald Trump? Is he still kissing his ass too? All the different members and hanging with me through all those different votes. But I do want to especially thank President Trump. I don't think you should anybody should doubt his influence. He was with me from the beginning. Somebody wrote the doubt of whether he was there and he was all in. He would call me and he would call others. And uh, he really was, I was just talking to him tonight, um, helping get those final votes. What he's really saying really for the party and the country. 
He sang for the party and the country. He helped him get across the finish line. He convinced so many people. Matter of fact, I guess the one person that he wanted to hear this did hear it because he's got nothing else to do. Uh, Donald Trump went over on uh, Truth Social and said, after Kevin said that, he said, the fake news media was, believe it or not, very gracious in the reporting that I greatly helped <laughs> Kevin McCarthy attain the position of Speaker of the House. Thank you. I did our country a big favor. That's what he said on Truth Social. So um, he said that, but what are some of those folks who were convinced by Donald Trump? Trump to vote in favor of Kevin McCarthy say after 15 to 16 of these votes. Uh, one said this, President Trump had no influence on the votes myself or my colleagues, said Bob Good of Virginia, one of the initial five so-called never Kevins who pushed for major changes to how the House functioned. He told ABC News this when they asked what influenced his decision. He's not the only one. On Saturday morning, it became clear that it was inevitable that Mr. McCarthy was going to become speaker and I saw no reason to prolong that through the weekend is what Good added. Someone else tweeted this out too. His name is Representative Matt Rosendale. He's from Montana, I believe. Uh, and he waved off Marjorie Taylor Greene when she was flashing a phone at him saying, the former president wants to speak to you. This is what he tweeted. Representative Marjorie uh, Taylor Greene, a Republican from Georgia, holds her smartphone with former US President Donald Trump on the line as Matt Rosendale, a Republican from Montana, waves it off during a meeting of the 118th Congress as they were trying to get that vote across. He wasn't having it either. One more though, you know, since it's only two on two right now. Here's another. Not with my decision, is what Rosendale said when asked if Trump played any role. My decision was based on the voters of Montana and to support the Constitution. I was meeting and listening to my constituents, and my effort was always focused on making sure we had a much more open process. Ralph Norman of South Carolina, another one of those first five initial Never Kevins, all of them were on board with men switching, not because of Donald Trump. But because of, I guess, other factors, maybe they got the concessions that they wanted, or maybe they figured that it wasn't gonna take them much longer. They didn't wanna go into the weekend. There's lots of other factors, but the one thing that they've agreed on is it wasn't Donald Trump. It depends on if the supporters are gonna listen to this. Uh, you guys have last thoughts on uh, this latest lie and grab for power from Kevin McCarthy? Yeah, yeah, it's just that was really painful to watch. That was embarrassing. And it's like the more embarrassed that Kevin McCarthy is, I think it's just the worst for everyone. I, I, I can't. That, that's it. That's, those were my final <laughs> thoughts on it. That was really hard to watch. I He'll mean, if, if he's gonna if he's gonna suck up to Santos, who is a lowly nobody nothing, of course he's gonna suck up to Donald Trump, who, you know, is still the favorite of the animating force of the party, right? Like the most gung ho, the most stridently GOP loving folks in the party are still beholden to Donald Trump. So he would be smart to, <laughs> to oh. do what he just did in that oh. press conference. Well, we'll see. I guess time will tell whether or not it was smart for him to do it because people, many people are saying the, his, his power over the party has been released. Uh, JR, I think you've been with me the whole time. Never sway. You've been <laughs> with me the whole time. <laughs> it's hard, bro. It's hard. This looks pathetic. Thanks for watching the Young Turks. I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that. All you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.